how long do you expect the Ben Simmons and Daryl Morey standoff to last? Yeah, see, this question does feel like a trap, but I'm going to turn this around on you guys because this is great news that we got today. The fact that Ben Simmons showed up, addressed the team, addressed the staff, and said, basically, I am not ready yet to play, and so yeah. I'm going to need some time to myself. Big upgrade. Enormous upgrade. What? Mentally what? ready. Why are you pointing? Don't, don't edit the quote. Don't try to rewrite this narrative. Give the full context. Okay, here we go. There it is. Yes. No, he is not mentally ready, which, by the way, I can understand. There's a deeper backstory to Ben Simmons. There's an episode of ESPN Daily with Mona Shelburne. Go listen to that to find out. But in terms of the stuff that we can joke about today, this is amazing news. It's amazing news because now we're just getting to the we're getting to the level of a normal holdout. We're getting to a guy just not being around. The thing about Ben Simmons is that he is the opposite of Jimmy Butler. So the only thing that surprised me about the entire saga we've been talking about for two weeks now is that he did the thing where he got kicked out of practice by Doc Rivers. That was worrisome because I was like, wait a minute, is Ben going to like completely change how he's wired, which is also kind of the problem that everyone in the Sixers also dislikes about him. And it turns out he's kind of back to the way I thought he was going to be, which is very boring, not around, and hoping desperately to leave. And that is a wow. that's a tenable situation that for Daryl right. Morey and for Ben Simmons to me. Very years. boring, not around, and desperately trying to leave reminds me of like my entire dating history until I got married. But <laughs> please, Dominique, go ahead. Uh, Your very, very cool husband. He's like in the music. He's awesome. I love that guy. But anyway. He makes a rap. Uh, yes, he, he does not rap, though. That, that, was, that was not fair, what you did right there, Pablo. I think it must be clear. That Nick I'm a God not, Mode fan. Well, I don't know. That's to be fair. I don't know. Nick might be spitting in the studio. It's just unreleased. No, absolutely not. <laughs> All right. The four, year, the four years comment is interesting to me because it illuminated something in my mind that I hadn't considered. Normally, in situations like this, there's one celebrity, and the one celebrity has to be concerned about their image, and that one celebrity is normally the superstar. In this situation, it's kind of two celebrities with huge egos facing off. And I know, Pablo, I know you know Daryl pretty well, but it seems interesting to me that he has a reputation as the guy who wins the, uh, the, who wins the trade. He's the, the smartest of all the nerds in basketball. He holds himself out as nerd Elvis King of Sloan yes. Analytics. So I think that's, that's right. an interesting dynamic to have considering all the like famous superstars in this case, including Doc Rivers is a big name. Joel Embiid's a big name. All these people have reputations. Big Sim Ben Simmons also in that situation. And then you throw Nerd Elvis in there also. And it just, it seems like all this makes it so much more difficult to get a deal done because it feels like a situation where everyone can't come out looking good unless Portland Trailblazers just all of a sudden get desperate. Everyone's going to come out of this, or so someone's going to come I, I, out of this feeling like they lost. I want to come at, come at this from the Maury point of view, which is, I think, the question. Now, so we, we've already discussed the Ben stuff ad nauseum and sort of how we got to this point. Um, but I think with Maury, the reasonable question now is, is he doing what's best for the team? Is this approach, yes. buckle up, uh, you know, we're going to, I'm going to ride this out. Uh, you know, there's, I think, different points of view on that. There, there, Sixers fans generally, I imagine, agree with him because they don't want to get a subpar return for Ben Simmons. But at some point during the season, you will hit a point of diminishing returns or a point where it feels like you're tanking a season and sort of cutting off your nose to spite your face. And I'm curious, Pablo, what you think that point is. Um, yeah. You know, because the comp, for he, the comp for this whole standoff is James Harden, right? Which is a lot funnier because James Harden, instead of refusing to do drills just got big, uh, which is not <laughs> yeah. what's happening with Ben Simmons and forced his way out. But I'll tell you what, as much blowback as Maury's gotten over the last couple of days, the Rockets certainly didn't win that scenario uh, by with that trade. So I think to some extent as a Sixers fan, while you're very frustrated with how you got here and you can blame X, Y, or Z, buckling up is probably the best approach. So I would love it, now that you mentioned it, if Ben Simmons just went nutty professor and just straight up wore a fat suit. That would be an it incredible development. It kind of worked for James Harden, but whether Daryl Morey, Mr. Sloan nerd, is the nutty professor here, I believe that he is quite rational. I believe that what is happening right now is actually like very well within schedule. Like it's October 22nd. I've been saying before all of this happened that this would probably stretch at, at least into the trade deadline. 
because Daryl is going to hold out for a player that actually is commensurate with Ben Simmons' value. What he is doing is saying to himself, and he said this explicitly, we can quibble with it, but that he values winning a title more than the distraction. And so I asked you really, practically speaking, how bad is the distraction? That, I, don't I don't think it's that bad. I, I really don't think it's that bad. I don't know if that if that trade is ever gonna exist. So like the public That's posturing of saying that we're gonna, I'll do this for four years is different from how he actually feels. So I don't think any of us believe that no, he's actually I, willing Dominique, to do this for four years. But four having years that position, would be amazing. But <laughs> having, he's not going to do it. Taking that position years. is yes. what gives him the most leverage that he can have. But in this situation, right. in a trade, whenever you're trading something like this, you need someone who is headed in the opposite direction as you, as a franchise. But the problem is, anyone who will be acquiring Ben Simmons, who's right. a superstar in his prime, would be a team that's going for it now. That means they're not going to give away a piece to another well, team that's, that's going for it now. Like, it yes, seems very hard that, to no, find no, 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 the matching would... puzzle piece. So logically, yes, that would be the case. But the thing about what Ben Simmons is, a guy with four years left on his contract, which informs the context here too, right? This is not James Harden. This is Ben Simmons. This is not Anthony Davis. This is a guy four years, 25 years old, Max Steele. The, the suitors are not just players and teams or teams specifically here that are contenders. It's small market teams that never get free agents with this much time so left on their deal. Point That's me, the Pablo, other part of the market. Put out the trade that you actually think, not the Sixers, but the other team would benefit from. I, I, I've heard all trades right. that obviously are good for the Sixers and what's best yeah. for them. I want you to tell us a trade that is not bad for the team that acquires Penn Simmons. <laughs> Don't you dare oh, put I mean, Pablo on the spot. That's, that's not fair. That's easier to me, though. That's an easier really? question because the Golden State it. Warriors could obviously use Ben Simmons, right? You plug him in. He doesn't need to shoot. They need defense. That is a fit. The Brooklyn Nets, this will not happen for many other reasons, yeah, including the fact that Ben Simmons may not be vaccinated Ooh. for reporting for Ramona Shelburne, um, or at least is under the protocol as if he isn't. Let's be legally, allegedly clear there. That's a perfect fit to me. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.